Sup nerds, I'm Tom. I'm Wes. It's not a kid's game, it's a family weight game. Hunga. So if you've ever played Trajan or Gugong, Hunga is pretty much the same thing, except one millionth <laughs> as, as complex. It's just the board is split up into a couple different areas where you do things in different areas, right? Most of it's collecting, for, you know, four of the sections are collecting resource, and then the others are gaining points. But then there's Hunga in the middle that you have to pay attention to, or as we always say, pet Hunga, which is somewhat like a feed your people mechanic. It's just a thing that you have to make sure you do every turn. Or, um, or not you make sure you do, it's something... You do or else. Right, right. It's a do it or else. You it's don't a, it's a you, you could ought not to do, do this. It. Yeah, it's a you ought to do this every turn. So that it it's not just strategy of gaining the resources and spending for points. It's not just strategy of gain the points in the best way possible while also starting trying to manage something else. Because when you take your action, you actually everyone has one of these cards in hand that has hands on it and it's in quadrants. <laughs> you have hands in your hands <laughs> and you put it on the board and whatever those hands go to, that's how many times you activate the area that the hands are pointing to. And you have to put hands towards Hanga or else Hanga's going to get mad that you're not paying attention to him and come start eating all your resources. So you could put it and say, I'm going to do this twice and this twice, but then Hanga's going to come eat my stuff. So you really want to position it such that, well, I'm going to pet Hanga and then do this other thing so that I get to keep all my stuff. Right. And also Hanga does stay with you until somebody else doesn't pay attention to Hanga. I'm or just, it's, there's cards where you can get rid of Hanga. Right. Moving forward, I'm going to say pet Hanga every time because saying pay attention to Hanga, first of all, it is verbose and it's going to take up, eat up way too much time in this review. And also, it's pet Hanga because we actually made a house rule where you have to actually pet, hey buddy, oh, he likes when you scratch your, oh, look at his leg, look at his leg. Under the gym. There are cards to get rid of him, which is pretty helpful, but also like twofold in that is that, okay, so now that he's already here, let's say for example, like he's, so he's eating your resources, which... Resources are a pretty big part of the game, but maybe you're not going for resources right now. You just want to use a couple of turns to move up this little mountain thing to get points. That doesn't really take resources, or you want to get a bunch of these uh, cards. But that means that until you get rid of hunger, you don't need to pet him anymore. You know, like yeah. you, you don't you don't gain any benefit from doing that. Um, but it also does mean that the hung, hunger hunger himself is more annoying in a lower point, in a lower player game. In a higher player game, there's a higher probability that he will bounce around more. If it's a yeah. two-player game and I take Hanga, you can just be like, all right, well, I'm well, just never... Now that Hanga's killing all your resources. Yeah, I'm going to always pet Hanga. I'm never. I'm going to do my best to make sure that he stays with you for as long as possible. It, yeah. it really is like a late game when you're trying to get as many points as possible. You're like, okay, I can give up... Like, I'm going to score this, and it's going to cost me one extra resource because I'm going to give that to Hanga, but I'm going to score six points or seven points, so... That's worth it. But you, it's not like first move of the game, you definitely don't want to not pet Honga. Yeah. It, it's it's kind of an annoyance, um, similar to a feed your people. But if you actually make it where you have to go pet Honga, then it's like, a, I get to pet Honga this time. I get to pet Honga a lot this turn. Yeah, I never love those do it or else mechanics. Those are always like, there's always going to be my least favorite part about a game. Well, I hate saying always. Anyways. But when it, they're light like this, it, it, it's okay, especially because this is a light game. That mechanic, or you lose one resource again, it, it's it's not that big of a deal. Um, and it, it I think it's mostly good for teaching like new players or kids because it's not just doing the math of gaining and spending for resources, which I we haven't really talked about how you get points. The, there's like three main ways you get, or really two main ways you get points. It's completing cards up here. So that's the gain resources and spend them for points. Pretty straightforward. But then there's also this uh, little mountain thing that as you advance up it, whenever you get to the top, it scores. So the top is five and all the steps below are like three twos and ones. So everybody on their scores and they go all the way back to the bottom. And then really there's only like points. I think there's some cards that give you points. Right. But like the elephant thing, there's this mammoth track here, which you just want to have majority that there. That just upgrades your action card every turn. Right. Because the uh, the circles that you play have a yeah, there's, four there's hands. Some, there's some points in here. Yeah. So like not much. It's, not much. The main ways are those two things and you can scoop up points a little bit somewhere else. But also so this, these little circle cards you have, there's four handprints uh, spread around here. If you get these tooth cards, there's five and those are, those are pretty dope. You don't want any one player to be getting this for too many rounds in a row. Yeah. Um, and actually, now that we're talking about the cards, I'll throw one back. Um, 
I guess I could say that, uh, and we, we brought this up. So this is, again, a family weight game, but like you could be playing it with kids and teaching it to kids. So the fact that you only have one card is good because that's like, that's a lot enough choice for kids. Where to place the card and the orientation, that's enough choices. Yeah. Um, but if you were to be playing this with like, you know, the bros and drinking uh, brews, bros and brews, which actually I think this game would work well for, I think we... we we should do like some kind of um, house ruling. We have like a hand of two or three or something. So I, I definitely get where you're coming from and I agree with that. I do. So I really like this game, but I don't think I'd ever play it with the bros. Like there's just, there's too many other like light games that I would rather play. The reason that I like this game so much is for introducing, especially younger kids to these mechanics because it's a, it's a lighter game. This says eight years old and up. Um, but it's inner, it's not just like, it's a game that I can enjoy and play with kids. I can see how this is training them to play games, like heavier games with me later. Like, okay. Pick where you're going to go. Resource management. There's also this track over here that like, you may not want to focus on it, but you don't want to neglect it either. Because if Tom's getting five points every time, why well, at least want to put something here and get one or two points so that you're only netting three points ahead of me, not five points ahead of me. And then you're trying mm -hmm. to get these missions up here and we're all kind of racing because they're public missions, but you can also do the mammoth. Like there's enough going on that it's really like, it's a little bit of like conditioning them to yeah. get ready for bigger, heavier games. Because it's not baby's first game. No. But it's baby's first real game, you know? Yeah. And I guess I get what you're saying. I mean, I probably still would... Um, play this with the boys um, i think you liked this game a lot more than i did i thought I'm like this is fine for teaching but that's all i want it for and i think you actually yeah. enjoyed it as a game yeah i mean it's definitely on the on like the bottom of the rung in terms of like acceptable weight you know what i mean mm -hmm. so like in terms of like especially euro -y games right it's kind of like a bell curve, but it probably the bell curve is probably skewed. It probably peaks for me not at five, probably more in like six, six point five is where the bell curves, and then it kind of comes back down. So yeah, this is definitely any lighter, and I would be say, and I would be agreeing with you now. And it could just be theme because I'm thinking if you rethemed this into like you know this is a dictator and we're all like serfs in his kingdom and we're trying to like rise up against him, but you can't ignore you stuff like pay homage to him or he's going to come and mess you up and it's like darker and grittier and a more adult theme like a game this light i don't have a problem with really i'm surprised because I, I actually like the caveman theme because you don't see that too much no like i Stone think Age it's, and, it's uh, not that's it maybe not even just the theme but like the the kitty fee it looks right, like a kid's the cartoony game. kitty i mean yeah like granted you were right I would play this with the boys. I am not choosing to play it with the boys. But were I to play it with the boys... <laughs> by the way, the boys, watching on Amazon Prime. Um, uh, I probably would pump it up a little bit to have a hand of two or three. Um, just so it becomes a little bit more of like an acceptable game. But you're right. The main reason why we're keeping this in our collections... Because it's going to bounce back and forth between us. It probably yeah. is. Is because of nieces and nephews. And like, really. My kids, your right? Nephews. But you're in a couple of years. Yeah. Let's be honest. Uh, I think you're only no, the, the, three right now. Yeah, so. not ready to play it yet. But this is going to be one that I'm like, oh, I'm really excited because I can tell this is one of the games that I'm going to be like, hey, it's time to get you into the real stuff. Yeah, this is going to launch them into becoming a gamer. Absolutely. Yeah. And if that's something that you're looking for, I definitely recommend that you check this out. If you like light games, if you've got kids that you play with, or even if this just looks interesting to you, because if you are adults and you're like that looks awesome no judgment here click the affiliate link down below to buy it because then we get a cut yeah but i don't know if i should get that game because i'm never going to be able to play it on that super cool game top you guys got there with that red play mat wow it's so wonderful you must have spent thousands of dollars no yo go check the link in the description box down below get yourself one it's a game topper it goes right on top of your table you can take it to the beach you can put it in the water it probably will sink but you can do it check the link in the description box down below ba boom either way make sure you subscribe to our channel so you'll never be bored